The victory is ours, and nothing on earth will ever be the same again. Right? Right? Christ has conquered the grave. Welcome to the week after. The week after euphoria. The week after trial. The week after Easter lilies. Egg hunts. Brunches. Trumpets. Angels. Hallelujah. This is the point in the liturgical calendar year. When we take a good, hard look at the post-resurrection world and think, now what? Or if we painfully are honest and brutally honest, so what? I don't know about you, but I am beyond grateful for our gospel reading that we have from John that we have read together this morning. Because it reminds me that the resurrection story honors Questions just like that. Yes. The glorious Easter hymns, notwithstanding, the week after has always seemed to be sometimes a little murky, messy, and a little complicated. The story of Thomas has always been one of my favorites. Mm. Of course, it's not just a story about Thomas, it's also a story about frightened disciples. Mm. Yeah. So scared that in fact they hid behind locked doors. Yes. And who can blame them? Mm -hmm. They had just witnessed the one they confessed to be the Messiah betrayed by one of his own. Tried and convicted mm -hmm. by both religious and civil authorities. Yes. And then brutally executed. Yes. Yes. Little wonder they were afraid, yeah. assuming that the next step would be to round up Jesus' followers. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But when Jesus comes to the sea, mm. their fear falls away Ooh. and is replaced by what? Joy. Yeah. This, I think, is the way we assume faith should work. Yes, perhaps you've got doubts and questions and fears, but then God arrives and those all fade away. Replaced by joy, wonder, and of course, unshakable faith. But that's not the way it works with Thomas. He questions. He disbelieves. He's not satisfied with second-hand reports. And wants to see for himself. And again, I would say, who can blame him? He was, after all, one of those who saw the Lord and friend mistreated, beaten, and then crucified, and was probably spent the last few days pulling the broken pieces of his life back together and trying to figure out what to do next. In fact, he might have already started getting on with his life. Why else, I wonder, is he out and about with the rest of the disciples, hiding behind locked doors? So here's what I'm wondering. A day or two after a joyous Easter service, do we make room for the Thomases in our world? Because I suspect that there is a legion, even among those who worshipped maybe with us last Sunday, and certainly among those who, with little or no familiarity of our congregation or faith, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thomas does come to believe. He sees Jesus for himself. And after that experience, he not only assents or consents to the witness of his comrades, but makes the most profound confession of faith about Jesus contained in the New Testament. Jesus, my Lord and my God. But all of that comes after he has a chance to voice his doubt. Yes. And sometimes faith is like that. It needs the freedom of yes. questions and doubt to really spring forth and take hold. Otherwise, faith might be simply confused with a repetition of formulas or giving your verbal consent to the faith statements of others. But true, vigorous, vibrant faith comes, I think, from the freedom to question, to wonder, and to maybe even doubt some. Not for everyone, of course. Mm -hmm. For some, faith comes more easily. Yes. Maybe many of the other disciples were like that. Although, let's not forget that they got to see 
see what Thomas asked for. Mm -hmm. But for others, it's harder for them. Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what the other disciples thought of about Thomas's initial skepticism. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were scandalized, or maybe they sympathized. Mm -hmm. Father, I suspect that John's whole point and including the story of the gospel is to affirm the faith of his community. Yes. A group of people who had not seen yet believed. Yes. Indeed, I think that if we don't have any doubts, we're probably not taking the story seriously mm -hmm. enough. I mean, really, think about what we confess when we come together on Sundays. That the creator of the vast cosmos not only becomes, but knows each and everything about us. Yes. And passionately knows about our ups and our downs. And is quite literally mm. in love with us more than we can ever fathom. For some, I've said, like, it's easy. For others, more difficult. For some, hearing the testimony of scripture is enough. For others, they need something more personal and direct. Yeah. Resurrection is a relationship. Yes, is. A relationship that will never be broken, that will never be abandoned, yeah. that will never know separation, yes. and will forever be. Yeah. Think, this is just a pie in the sky promise to you. Let's pause and think for a moment about how much a relationship that will never end really means and what it really means. We live for yes. and exist yes. in relationships that are not life-giving mm -hmm. in our lives, that are maybe dissolving in our lives, that will end most certainly because of every fault or no fault of your own. Yes. Yes. Think about the relationships that have changed over time in your life. They can't go back to the way they were before. That needs some change. But maybe can't. And in the end, maybe that's okay. So we exist in tension and frustration and grief because we're not sure how to handle an acceptable way in the relationship. Or how to negotiate what this means for our relationships in the future. Think about the relationships that ended too soon. By terrorist attacks, the ruthlessness of illness, the not-so-random events of nature's reaction to environments, the sudden separations not planned, mm -hmm. never anticipated, and so devastating for whatever reason and for whatever cause. Think about your relationship with the Lord. Yes. A relationship with the Lord knows no end. Mm -hmm. Relationship with the Lord knows no faults. Yes. A relationship with the Lord oh, is true, true and will never end. Our lives exist and are known through and defined by broken relationships. But it is not so with our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. is <coughs> this is the truth and the grace of the Gospel of John 20, verses 30 to 31 that we heard this morning. The point of God's revealed self in the world, made flesh, the word crucified, the word resurrection, and the word ascended is a commitment like no other to show what true relationship means. Resurrection is relationship. Yes, it is. How truthful is all of this? If Thomas hadn't been a doubter, this Famous saying that we hear of doubting Thomas okay. might not have been recorded in history. This particular saying has helped me in many times in my life. When things have been going badly in my life, when I've faced hardships and pain, this saying has given me hope in the end. Amen. Even though Thomas earned a negative label, Amen. he was not lacking in some very good qualities. He displayed great courage yes. and loyalty. Yes. I think I have behaved similar like Thomas in my life before. Amen. I've gone through stages in my life when I questioned God. Yeah. When I was in college, I remember wondering why in the world had God called me into ministry with my doubts 
about going into the ministry. I had many questions and doubts at that time in my life. And I would have called myself a doubting Thomas. Because I had not seen God work. Jesus didn't have to appear to me and show me his wound, however. But he has showed himself in me so many times that I can ever, ever name. Jesus has answered many prayers in my life. And I hope that he's done the same for you. Maybe not in a miraculous way, but he has made me very much aware that he does exist. As we heard this morning, the young boy was five years old. He just got you know, shot and shot himself. Man. And we think that there's not a God. Come on, man. And this past week, I went to see the movie Breakthrough. I don't know if any of you have seen that yet. About a young boy who was out with his friends back in 2015, walking on the lake after he was told not to be walking on the lake that was frozen and fell under and almost drowned. And spent many weeks in the hospital. And the doctors came in and said, Woo, there's nothing else we can do. But the mother continued to pray and to pray and to pray and had the whole community come in to pray. And that's what we find in that number one And there's no God in this world, brother. Really? It's so true. My God is so much bigger than he is here. The whole planet that he deserves. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we put our hope into the other things of this world that mean nothing. And none of those things will get us into heaven. Yes. But it's the relationship, and like you learned yesterday, for those of you who are at the prayer breakfast, the agape love that we Woo! show yes. to each yes. of God's children. Yes. Amen. That's going to help us to get there. I find Jesus, I try to at least find Jesus each and every day in my journey. As I walk throughout this thing we call life, sometimes I see his humility on a street corner, right here in the city of Ashburn, in the shape of a homeless man or woman. I see Jesus in the pink of a sunset and the beautiful colors of the stained glass windows that we have here in this church. I do my best to stay close to God in my daily prayer and my mission work and studying His holy word. And I strive every day to walk with Jesus each and every moment. And I pray that I won't get lost and be a doubting Thomas again. Brothers and sisters, we have all sinned. And deserve God's judgment. God the Father sent His only Son to satisfy that judgment for those who believe in Him. Jesus, the Creator and the eternal Son of God, who lived a sinless life, loves us so much that He died for our sins, taking the punishment that we deserve was buried and rose from the dead. Resurrection, my friends, is relationship. A relationship with Jesus that I hope you are a part of and that you believe in. Celebrate that in your life. But you know, we can't just do it from our seats. We have to get up, sir. Amen. We have to get up from those pews and do something for the Lord. Amen. We can't just do something sitting there where we are. This world is in need of the love of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. Do you hear that? Amen. How are you going to do it? We can talk and gripe and complain about this and complain about that. But 
But what are you going to do about it? Ain't nothing going to happen when you talk and write and complain about him. Amen. We have to be willing and able to get up and do something about it. We're not called to gripe Amen. and to complain about anything if we're not getting up out of our seats mm -hmm. and doing something about it. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to be able to have that true resurrection relationship with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord? Or are you just going to talk about it from your pew or on the phone? Church. Jesus. I feel something that's coming here. And I don't know what it is. It's going to be a day when we all have to give an account for the things that we've done in our life before our maker. Yes. And I pray that I'm a, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. But I'm saved, forgiven by God's grace, His mercy. Yes, yes, yes. And I hope that when I meet my maker face to face, He'll say to me, well done, good and faithful yes. servant. Yes. Welcome. Welcome yes. to my home that I prepared for you. Yes. Yes, Lord. My father's house are many mansions. So how will you make it to the pearly gates of heaven? Yes, you can pray every day. Mm -hmm. You can read your Bible every day. Amen. But uh, are those only things that will get you into heaven? Amen. Yeah. It's by your actions and how you tell about the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That will also help you to get into heaven. Amen. So how is it with your soul? Mm. How is it with your resurrection relationship with Jesus this morning? It's okay to ask those questions. You need to help some. But have you seen the Lord? Have you seen the mighty things that the Lord can do? If we just ask. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock, the door will be opened. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So I don't know what it is that's on your hearts that you may be questioning about this morning, or the doubts that you might have in your life. But I want you to know that I'm right there with you, Amen. walking alongside you. And I hope that I can be able to navigate and Walk alongside you as we ask those questions. Those deep questions together. And as we have those doubts, I hope that they'll be able to strengthen us and will grow us closer in our relationship with the resurrected Jesus Christ.